how to celebrate each and every one of us. Such a wonderful atmosphere. It has been awesome. I appreciate God for all the word that has come forth. Thank you everyone that has shared God's word to God's people. Just say to him to talk to you. Say, Jesus, the someone is speak your word to me. And so, Father, we thank you for this morning. That's why we came, that you will repair our life again. That you will speak to us your word, your very word that can transform and change any man. Teach us your ways, Rabboni. Open up your scrolls to us again. Thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Every privilege and every opportunity you have to listen to God's word, you must give it your utmost priority. You get to a point of your life when the word of God can no longer move you. Isaiah said, And to whom will I look unto? To whom will I turn? He that trembles at my word. He that trembles at my word. There are times I still listen to messages and I cry. That's the posture to which you must come to church. His word. What does he have to say today? I prefer God giving me his words that correct me than his words that massages my ego. You know, I can come say certain things to you and you just say, yeah, 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 yeah. And we are done. Do you understand that? But you see, give me Genesis 18, 20. Stay there. I'll start from there. While I was praying for the meeting last night, God said, talk about this, then I'll go to my message. We must understand that one of the, one of the fights of the devil is against what we call the unity of the body. I'm not talking about the body of Christ in the general form of the church, but you as a person. You know, the devil is so mad at man. That's why in Psalm chapter 8, they say, what is man that thou art mindful of? How did you make such a creature? Because only that man has the ability to live in God's three dimension. He has a soul, he has a spirit, he has a body. That man can exert dominion over the air, over the land and under the sea. So the devil is mad. Why? Because spirits were created to only function in the spiritual realm. But man can function in all realms. That's the journey to immortality when we can come into the unity of the body the soul and the spirit under the lordship of the fourth man then we can get through fire and it won't hurt us if it's bigger than you tell me i'll come down is that okay the bible says and three men were with the fourth man in the fire and they couldn't touch them that's the journey the journey to establishing yourself in eternal life are we following so the gift of righteousness saves our spirit the word of righteousness sanctifies our soul and the fruit of righteousness glorifies our body do we understand what I'm saying now the gift of righteousness saves our spirit that's what it means to be born again to receive the gift of righteousness then the Bible tells us in Romans 12 and verse 2 that this whole word get continually renewed in our mind. So the word of righteousness sanctifies our soul and then the fruit of righteousness glorifies our body. That's when you now understand what Jesus said in the Lord's prayer when he said to the disciples thy kingdom come thy will be done as it is in heaven give us this day blah, 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 blah. finally he said for thine is what the kingdom the power and the glory because the gift of righteousness which deals with our spirit came from where the kingdom the word of righteousness that sanctifies our soul the bible tells us in Romans 1 16 that it is the power of God and the glory is what touches a man's body do we understand what I'm saying so when man can come into that unity because the problem sometimes is not that's why jesus told, told us something luke 22 about the disciples he said that the spirit was willing the flesh is weak some of you want to carry an immature spirit to control a matured body and so so that's what the word of righteousness does 
it strengthens you it builds your spirit up to a point there can be exact unity between the threefold man do we understand all I'm saying so that's why you find out why am I still struggling with some things it's the fight for that unity it's the fight for that coming together the Bible tells us in Genesis 18 and the Lord said because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is what is great so what I was asking God I said Lord how comes you see people so dedicated to your work dedicated to your service and yet it seems like their life aren't changing things are that things going on well I've given you the first rule right that there must be a unity between the body the soul and what the spirit you can't be sound in your spirit impacted with the life of God and still think like a failure you can't be sound in your spirit impacted with the life of God and then you confess negativity I am finished this semester is gone do you understand that you begin to frustrate the flow of God's power the threefold man must agree and come in reason for you to see the operations of God's power in your life are we getting blessed this morning secondly you must deal with Christ do you know it is possible to be in the church and be struggling I prove to you scripture the Bible says that Jesus was with the disciple in the boat Mark chapter 5 and as they were going there came a boisterous wind and the ship was being tossed here and there and I was getting into the ship and Jesus was what? sleeping and the disciples shouted master master alas we perish alas we die so it is possible to be right where Jesus is and things are still going wrong I give you an exa another example the Bible says at one time Abraham prayed and Jesus came to the st um, um, shore of the sea and saw that the ship was far off so it means his intention was never to walk on water if the boat was there he would have entered it do you understand that? Uh -huh. But because the, the ship was far off and he didn't need to stretch the disciple, he began to walk on the waters. And Peter said, Master, bid me if it be you to come. And he said, Peter, come. At a certain point in time, the Bible says when he took his face away from Jesus, he began to walk in the face of the devil. Jesus was the one standing there. You can be in the front of Jesus and still sink. And there will be nothing about Jesus that show forth in your life why because of number two Christ he said I will go down to Sodom and check this great cry some of you it's not that the words on your life are not heavy there are cries against you Christ against you Christ some Christ could be certain what God gave to you you disobeyed you are now wondering it's all I'm doing. Lord, why are things not changing life? Christ. Christ. Some vows you made to God. When I come to the university, this is what I will do for you. Now you've dropped that. Those are Christ being raised against you. Trace Christ in your life. Some might be disobedience to simple instruction. And you're wondering. But I'm giving my best. What's, what's happening? There are cries. There are cries. There are cries. Some of you might be your attitude to your parents. So you come, I lay my hands, I lay my legs on you. And the life isn't changing. Because there are what? Cries. Something is crying against you. And saying this one must struggle. This one cannot make it. Deal with Christ. Deal with Christ. Deal with Christ. That's why you must comport your life in a way to avoid certain Christ behind the scene to fight you. Comport your life. 
we together comport your life in such a way that certain Christ will not fight you just like what Pastor Tangor was preaching how comes God said to you wait for me to his summons Samuel I will come in three days and you said because the people wanted to desert me you decide to interfere with such a delegated authority is a cry it's a cry You know, see, you must be careful, especially spiritual people. I'm saying this because I've seen a lot of church folks being frustrated in God. Most of them are getting out of churches now. Go online and see everything on pastors and churches. Somebody's life is now, he says, church. He's pastor. And they won't check their attitudes that are raising negative Christ to the heaven. The Bible says, and to Saul through the prophet Samuel. I preached that message, right? Go kill the Amalekites, spare nothing. The problem there was that he made a man who was not called into the office of a prophet to become a prophet. Some of you came, you couldn't hear nothing. You don't even know what it is to be led by God. <laughs> you know the reply of Saul? He said, But God said, I mean, the instruction came from somewhere to this same man. Now he's saying what God said. Samuel, I can hear something too now. What are you saying? That's why in your workings with God, you must get to a point you are pieces, not just broken. You are pieces. Too. You are pieces. Ask me. They will tell you the way I live my life. You are bendable, malleable, you are st stretchable, you are enable. In God's hand. Do you know how much he has embarrassed me? The Yoruba said the only God that can make his prophet a liar. Have you not heard that name? You only call him Arabaribiti. Uh, 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 you don't call him the other one that can make you a liar. He can say, son, go prophesy. There will be rain in three days and the rain will not fall. Then he will laugh at you from heaven. <laughs> and so I just want to test you. I want to see how you behave. Are we together? You must be broken to stop cries. Whatever it is, by the end of the sermon, God ministers to your heart a cry that might be speaking somewhere against you. I don't know how to deceive people and tell them lies. My prayer won't solve it. You need to deal with that cry. Because once the devil, the Bible calls him the accuser of what? The brethren. You must be careful not to give him opportunity for what? Accusation. Or this one cannot be blessed. You must be careful. Some of you might be your attitude take things to the exam hall. Alright? Bow down your head and just pray in one minute. Don't let every cry against me. Let every cry against me be addressed right now. Come down to prayer. Every cry against me, God, let it be addressed. Spirit. What might be crying against me? Is it that maybe I said something behind the scene about someone negatively and I, to me I felt it's over? It doesn't, I don't, it doesn't matter doesn't matter it might be a cry he said i will go down and check sodom for there is a great cry coming a cry something that hinders my eyes to see that city a great cry what had god asked you to do that you didn't do what did you see and he said it to your heart but daughter son you shouldn't say this thing you shouldn't behave this way. You said, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. It's a great car.
can, that can stop men from profiting in his house in Jesus name we have prayed what it takes for a generation not to ignore you what it takes for a generation not to ignore you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 15 and matthew 5 16 first timothy 4 15 the bible says meditate upon these things give thyself wholly unto them till thy profiting appear to all so one of the interests of god is that for every man he will use a generation must take a notice of them till thy profiting appear to some ah can we respond your profiting is to appear to what to all your generation must know that a man existed you must live your life in such a way that you will write your name in gold on the sands of time when you talk about elijah in scripture you talk about the man who called on fire when you talk about paul you talk of a man who went to the third heavens living the abundance of revelation when they call your name what will you be remembered for when you talk about my tomorrow you talked about a man who dealt in the direction of purpose and leadership when they call your name what will your generation remember you for Matthew 5 16, the Bible says that your light will so shine before men did you see that before angels before spiritual realms that your light must so shine so whatever you get from the secret place must appear in the open place whatever the bible said and they took notice of them that they had been with christ and like what pastor tango said every man that genuinely encountered god carries a fragrance there is a way he smells so that they will see your good works and they will glorify your father which is well in heaven that's the desire of god that your generation must take a notice of you if in your days you don't do things that boost the attention of your generation even god will be surprised because of the endowments of the divine upon you imagine what you sit under in this atmosphere week in week out listening to you and you want to end up in known entity it's impossible you know why i'm teaching this is that some people have attributed it to be a sense of righteousness when you just hide yourself you know what the, the brothers of jesus said to him no man carries such a grace and keeps it inside the house he goes and brings that to where it is relevant and necessary i choose very early life to live a mark in my in my generation I choose not to live a life like an ordinary person like every other person you just finish school you get job you marry you born children and improve the population of the world then you die and post on instagram you know when you snap in front of shopping mall that's the nations you are taking the nations you have been asking for give me the nations you go to dubai you snap you have gotten your nations you must live your life in so that your generation will know that you existed no matter the field of endeavor no matter your specialization you say no papa you can be popular because you are a preacher i'm very sure some people know sinaj than me there are people who know is there a bro coco what did they call him bovi right i go die some of them they know them more than they know me it has nothing to do with your area of faith but the mindset to which you are raised do i want to die in silence do i want to live a life that it concerns only me or that my generation to feel my impact john 5 and verse 35 the bible says about john that he was a burning and a shining light it simply means anywhere he stepped his heat could be felt darkness disappears he was a burning and a shining light. Are we together? Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and 
glorify your name you know when we begin to train the church like this people will not understand that you getting first class is not because you need a good job no it's because of the royal man i am carrying in the inside of me he's too big to carry certain kinds of greed i comport even the way i would dress will change because i know who is in the inside of me you are an embodiment of the divine the godhead bodily now what does it take for a generation not to ignore you number one the anointing of god on your life luke 4 14 songs of solomon 1 verse 3 the anointing of god on your life it is tangible look for the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him a fame of him the anointing is an undilutable fragrance that's why you can't fight a man with genuine grace the grace he carries will disgrace you you can't fight a man with grace it's the anointing it's the anointing tangible enough on a man he said when Jesus carried it that means there was a time he didn't have it but when he carried it the fame of him went abroad songs of solomon 1 and verse 3 he said because of thy lovely ointment songs of solomon 1 and verse 3 he said because of the savour of thy good ointment thy name is as ointment poor for therefore to men it's the mystery of favor it's the anointing that's what will make a 70 years old man call me daddy not me who am i but the anointing i remember the place where you brought me from lord i thank you for where i am today i see you doing and you walk in my life Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11. Listen, you are an embodiment of possibility. Some of you don't know what you carry. I didn't know what was on me till I stretched myself. Your problem is laziness. The Bible says he had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had said the word in their heart. What did he say in a man? The word. So that no man can find out the work of God that God made from the beginning to the end. Wait, wait, wait. It simply means that you have no idea what, what Sister Victoria can be. You don't have. <laughs> he said, This is how he made men. They can't search it. That's why you see certain men now. Very soon you see a movie with president. You say, Vicky, that we are with Ecclesiastes 3. He said he kept it. That even the man himself cannot understand the full scope of God. That's why he will follow and follow. <laughs> you are the embodiments of realities. The anointing of God on a man the anointing you carry it genuinely on you or on what you do your generation cannot ignore you i have operated without the anointing i'm operating in the anointing i know the difference i know what it's called the anointing i know <laughs> ay, 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 ay. I remember those early days when we were looking for God. <coughs> Cast demons, hours. Out! I know they go. Out! I know they go. One time, one of my sons was with me. Listen, listen. 
and he said to me, say, Papa, mm -hmm. I smell demonic atmosphere. I said, I don't. And he was confused. Can a metal detect plastic? It's your level. Your level still smells. As we come, they go. It's a level. That's why you can still design it. It's your level. I, I can't detect it. Are we together? The anointing is real and tangible. You can feel it on a man. Tangible. Tangible. Your generation cannot ignore you. Pray one prayer where you are sitting and say, Lord, put your anointing on my life that will answer the cry of my generation. Kaboti la hati beke tumbaye in Jesus' name of prayer. See, listen. You know, if you ask my wife and those that stay with me, sometimes one time my wife looked at me and said, Baby, what is it that you don't know? And I told her, I said, There is a difference between a pond and a stream. Some of you, you can see me, maybe we organize an interactive session here. And I just collect the mic and I start talking. You ask me a question. You felt maybe it's because I read so much to come. Have you not found out that some of you said, I'm waiting to see Papa. There's a question I want to ask him. And when you stand before me, your question disappears. There are men who carry such an information as a pond. There are men who carry it as a stream. They are him. So you stand before them. You don't have questions. You are looking for it. It's the tangibility of the anointing. Few nights ago, I was just awake and one of my daughter called me. Oh, Papa, I'm under attack. What happened? I had a dream and I was attacked in the dream. My wife was with me. And I picked the phone. Seven, get out! And I caught the phone. That was all. He knows my name. What went to work was the tangibility of what we call the anointing. You don't copy it. You can copy my dress sense, but you can't copy my grace. It is an impactation on me. You can copy my gesticulations, my rhetorics, the way I behave and talk. You can't copy my result. You can't. Are we together? The tangibility of the anointing. And you grab for it. Now, see. You know why I said that example? When she said, what is it that you don't know? It's because of that oil on the man. That unction. That's why, have you not read in the scripture of 1 Kings? We had a king Ahab sent his servant Obadiah to go search for the prophets to come and give them water when he's not working in the ministry of water resources. The prophet was not a water engineer, yet he was being sought for to bring water. So it can handle even physical problems. Tangibility of the anointing. Number two. So how do you get the anointing and grow in it? Number one, life of solid prayers. Continuous life of prayers. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh. If I don't pray, the anointing will come. It will come. You pray. You pray. He said, an of um, Ephraphatos, who labor fervently in prayer. Prayer is a labor. Hard work. You will pray. I've prayed to a point my ribs were affected. I will hold it like this. Yes. They told you that it will be easy. That's a problem. They gave you a very terrible kind of gospel, spaghetti Christianity. Oh, it will cost you. It will. I've prayed to a point I became weary. That I swear, don't tell me. But I now saw one verse. Be not weary in well doing. <laughs> but if I endure, I now got encouraged. So he told you early that weariness will come. It will cost you. Life of solid prayers. Solid prayers. Well, you will smell like what you spend so much time with. See some of my children that spend so much time, they'll start talking like me. Behaving like me. Yes, you will smell like what you spend so much time with. Prayers. Word addict. Be so full of God's word. And quality time waiting on God. Number two, what does it take for a generation not to ignore you? An undeniable gifts 
skill and talents you have that source an undeniable gift skill or talents you have that solves what a problem you are either solving a problem you are either creating one or you are the problem it has to be one of these three you are either solving what a problem you are either creating a problem or you are the you know i told so, somebody somebody was sharing with me on certain things happening in the church and you know there are issues here and there yeah, and I said, I, I, I said one, open your back. So he opened it and I said, read for me, First Corinthians 14, 40. And he read. He said, for God is not an author of confusion. So that means confusion is authored by somebody. Anywhere you see it, somebody is behind it. Anywhere you see a human being, not just spirit. Is, is that not why we kept ushers here? Because if they are not sure, some of you will sit outside and say, I like listening from the window. Us human beings are involved. Are we together? <laughs> Number two, I said what? An undeniable skill, gift, and talent that solves what? A problem. Force yourself to gain relevant skills. Proverbs 16 and verse 18. He said that the gift of a man will make room for him what you need is common sense that's why listen christianity is for reasonable people i have always told you isaiah is there isaiah now chapter one he said come if your sin is as red as scarlet let us reason together so even for forgiveness you need to be reasonable let us reason together of, the bible says and he anoints my head with what oh yeah then my cup will now run over so the anointing comes on head that has something on head that don't have sense you can't be asking a question nobody answering a question nobody is asking relevant skill and talent imagine you coming to me and say papa i want to learn how to do typewriter is something wrong with you relevant be relevant let it solve what a problem let it be something that people want do we understand that so nobody says you're going to be learning anything be learning anything be learning anything number three what it takes for a generation not to ignore you your competence mastery and expertise your competence mastery and expertise expertise proverbs 22 and verse 29 the bible says show me a man skillful and diligent in his business he will stand before kings and not ordinary man number one it simply means it is possible for any man show me a man irrespective of tribe ethnicity religion show me what a man number two look at what he said cs dab it simply means if you truly are like this, people will see it. See us thou a man. The first rule there is that they will what? See it. That you are diligent and you are what? Skillful. There are companies willing to pay people 10 million monthly. They are only looking for experts. Stop saying there is no job. You are in the crowd. Distinguish yourself with expert power. Become so competent. Become a master in your field. Become a master. There are spaces, oh. Spaces. That's why I came to challenge you that sometimes the problem is not your altar. You are cooperating with it. No altar has the ability to have a grip on your life except you cooperate with it. Become an expert in your field. Become an expert. Are we getting blessed this morning? For Samuel 16 and verse 18. Listen, you can have multiple skills, but be an expert in one. Have multiple skills, but be an expert in one. The Bible says, Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen. If you are an expert, you will be seeable. He was not there, he didn't submit CV. 
I have seen. He took notice of it. That's why, you see, where we train people falsely with the doctrine of, you know, not becoming an expert, is in the church. Yes, it's in the church. For instance, right now, if we make it the only expert we sing, people will develop themselves. But now it is roster. You sing today, I sing tomorrow. You sing tomorrow, I sing next week. Is, is that not what we do? So people go out without mentality from the church set up to the world, thinking that's how it works. Listen, one thing the world will never forgive you for is the amount of value you are bringing to the table. When it comes to the reception of value, the world does not forgive mediocrity. They don't see no company saying, I don't like you, let's just be paying you like that. There is no compromise when it comes to value before great men. No compromise. First Samuel 16, 18. Can I have that scripture? So I will read. Become an expert. Apply deliberate practice to your chosen field. Be your best. Be so good that you cannot be ignored. Be so good that you cannot be ignored. Stretch yourself. Put the discomfort. Become better. Even if you slay me. The Bible says that is cunning in plain. They didn't say he can play keyboard. When he plays it like this in Jacob, I will leave everyone. He is cunning in plain. What they were looking for first was keyboard. It shows that there were many people that can play it. But look at the exception ability he had. Cunning and a mighty valiant man. He won't just play for one hour and get tired. That's what some of you, that's what I'm pitying you. Please, some of you don't need to look for what we have. Oh. You will survive it. You, you won't go far. <laughs> Can you stand like this? Five days, go sleep. Forget what we do in the outward. We dress fine, put good shoes. That's where it ends. Oh. That's where it ends. I went to Kogi State for three days meeting. I didn't put one thing on my mouth because I came to bless a life. So are you here? And he was such a growing young pastor. He went just for a meeting on his way coming. <laughs> Satan will make mess of you. <laughs> it's not the way you are thinking. Do we understand that? Competence. Become better. Be good. You can't claim you have the Holy Ghost and be offering terrible services to people services. Everything you do for somebody, they must complain. Be competent. It gets to that. I mean even your handwriting. The way you dress to appear before someone that wants to give you a job and a contract. Be competent. competent. I told you one time a lady walked to my office and said, sir, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to associate with me. That's why we just started the ministry. What she said understand is that even me she's talking to now, I, I'm trying not to associate it's just because there was no way to escape from my office. The things I was perceiving. And I said to her, I said, please, the Lord has spoken. Buy one packet of Tura. I gave her product. I said, when you bring it, I'll pray. And I was wasting my time. I just needed that to help herself. Be competent in your best in whatever you are doing if you are called to be a pastor be a first class pastor preach and let people not sleep under your sermon not that because of you their position see all my ushers are sitting down am i not helping them imagine some now they position everybody everywhere two two seats so that they can be tapping people because you know they will sleep you prepare for it you are reading anything see even if it is ausa he can what an expert. There are people in the amb embassy interpreting also. Any millions of naira become an expert. Look for valuable and rare skills. What did I say? Rare. That is not too common. Add them to that your profession. Whatever you are reading, don't be like everybody carries certificate like this. Blah, 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 blah. Learn it in your field. Is that okay? Can we do one more? 
Number four, what it takes for a generation not to ignore you. The value you bring to the table. The value Genesis 41 from verse 37 to 44. You carve yourself in the table of greatness based on the value you bring to the table. Genesis Genesis 41, 37 to 44. The Bible says, and when they brought Joseph out to stand before Pharaoh, he didn't just have the ability to interpret him. Look at what he said. He said, but I say to you now, O Pharaoh, look for a man. Let a man set him in charge. Let him be able to gather this food for seven years. And when he was done, Pharaoh said, uh -uh, a man that can bring the solution. Should we still be looking for a man? When it comes to people receiving value, they won't compromise ethnicity. They won't compromise religion. Say it's because it's from us. It's because it's from us. They won't. It's because I know him. Ah, ah. They must see value. Especially in the days we are. What is the value you bring to the table? Point one, we said what? Point one, what does it mean? Takes for a generation not to ignore you. So irrespective of what you do. Have you not seen people that are so good? What they need is the anointing of God that can shoot them out. Shoot them out. That makes, they sing, 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 tone voice, tone voice, tone voice. But you know what? Then people will be wondering. <laughs> wow. As if they never heard voice before in their life. It's the anointing. Now the problem is not as if I cannot give you. That's one grace I have. My grace is transferable. But the problem is, can you even maintain it? That's the problem. Can you maintain it? And one time God said to Eli um, Moses, pick your oil and put it on 70 others. And so even those that did not come were prophesying. The Bible said and they prophesied that is the ones and last. Because what makes Moses to continue to prophesy is an engine. It's a prophetic engine inside that sponsors that. He just he lighted the lamp. Not be so, but the fuel is not there. So after a while, the light just burns out. That fuel now what sustains it? That's what the people don't have. Number two, we said is what? Undeniable skills, talents that solves what? That solves what? A problem. Very important. Very, very important. It simply means that there are type of things you cannot do here. You won't prosper. It's not a cause. Is that not so? You won't prosper. Number three. Your competence, mastery, and what? Expertise. Expertise. Anything you are doing, improve yourself. Even as a pastor, I develop myself. Have I preached and you are feeling what are you saying? Improve yourself. Get better by the day. I read on a daily basis, listening to sound teachings on a daily basis, just to become a better pastor, to pastor you well. Yes, God speaks to me directly. He says certain things to me. But if I claim to you that everything that I know that I'm saying to you comes from a vision, then that vision is what? Television. I watched it. Do you understand that? Number four. Huh? The value you bring to what? The table. Do you know that men, including God, puts you into category in his life based on their value system? That's why don't become a pest to people. Be looking for how to create value in their life that they can't recover from. They will hold you into highest thing for life. Not creating problems, creating issues for them. You don't hold the same category with everyone in the life of everybody. everybody. It's not true. Whoever taught you that lied. Everybody sent, set themselves into different categories in a man's life based on what their value they bring. And those that don't bring value are headed. One time, one of my father was in the office and he had one of his sons he sent for 
to come see him. And while the guy was waiting, they told him another son was around. He had waited for an hour. And the person was somebody left and they told him another son. He said, okay, let the other one come. And the guy was furious. Angry. Angry. Seriously angry. After like two, three hours, the guy came. My papa said, you could sit on his face. And he kept smiling. You know, that's all. He just been smiling at you. He said, sit down. He said, I see you are very angry. He said, yes, sir. I've been waiting for like three hours. You need to sack your staff. That's the first way I would disown you. You came to an organization of which people have survived. Then you are recommending who I should sack. You should be the first. You know, there are people like that. You. And while he sat down there, my papa said, Okay, sorry. The major thing now is you have the time to talk to me. He said, Papa, I'm actually, I need some money. My ministry is this, this, this. He said, Okay. He opened his locker and brought out some foreign currency and gave to him. I said, you see this money I'm giving to you. Is that one that you're angry that came first that brought it? So if you are sat down here without even him coming, there will have been nothing for you. So you are coming to collect. <laughs> Someone is coming. Who should I attend to first? That was the last point. I, that's the last point I gave. Let me give you one fifth one. Visibility. Strive for what? Visibility. Some of you don't need any hand on your head again. What you don't have is what? Visibility. It's called the mystery of borrowed vessels. The woman had the oil. Just like the way you are so talented. But the problem there is that the oil was useless at that point. She needed to borrow what? Other vessels. Borrow other bigger influencers platform. And let people know what you are doing. The mystery of what? Borrowed vessels. He said, no man lighted a candle, Matthew 5, 14, and put it under what? A bushel. He said, he brings it out for all to see. He brings it out for all to what? To see. But before you are visible, you don't bring foolishness to visibility. You bring the anointing. You bring a skill that solves a problem. You bring, you make sure that skill, you are already a master in it. Are we following? Master, be, be so great in that thing. Then you, you make sure that you are bringing a value. Because of you actually need to be hiding yourself. You say you are doing photography. You snap us in the face, person like black and white. You know those negative pictures when our fathers were growing? I will never settle for less. I know there's more than sound in you. You see, what I taught today applies to any aspect of life. Any aspect of life. Mastery. Competence. Church people, don't tell yourself lies. This is what limits men. If you are called into ministry, give it all it takes. Give it all it takes. Be so competent in your skill. See, even in the football field, who are paid the highest? Experts. Whose name do you know the more? Experts. Not just every player. That's how it works. I profess over your life. Can we pray the first prayer? Lord, put your tangible and feelable anointing on my life. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. We pray the next prayer. Talked about a rare and valuable gift, skill, or talent. We pray this prayer this way. Lord, everything you have placed in me that is to announce me to the world or any skill I need to get that is to announce me to the world put your fire that will lead me to it i refuse to be a non-entity to my generation make me a problem solver make me a problem solver we'll pray this prayer but it does not end in prayers ignorance does not die by fire it dies by learning you don't know and you don't know what are you believing in 
I didn't climb to where I am by a mistake. I put in my strength into my calling, into what I'm doing. Go online. If your generation don't receive you, ignore them. God in heaven will. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, calm down. Even if you lie to others, don't lie to yourself. Nobody say they don't like you. See I'm now. Nobody say they don't like you. You no good. You no good. Even if you are God, He will answer. You will answer some of the prayer you are praying for. Let kings come to my brightness and shining. Let God should risk kings. He should risk it and disgrace the whole of Christianity. Well, this message is going out and it's going viral because we need to change this Christians have a kind of mindset that are very very terrible very very terrible you are keeping malice with me because I'm not patronizing you again do you know what it is that one material how many years it takes for someone to sow it to my life you spoil it when I don't know the next one I'm coming I should patronize you and you are telling people He's my pastor, but I don't but I will not. Don't use Christianity to cover. Put in what your best. Get involved. Look for experts. Build competence. Join communities on Twitter. You are into product design. You are US. Join communities. Reason with like minded has nothing to do with religion. It has what? Nothing to do with religion. If it was by religion and prayer and fasting, Dubai will not be what it is. It requires a man to operate like a human being. Behave like you are human. Learn what you are supposed to learn. Put in your best in it. That's why till date, no system of entrepreneur in the entire world has been able to beat the Igbo system. A guy will stay there for seven years. Let me make up three hours and you are competent to go and make up kings seven years he will sit down under that place the ogre will insult him he will stay like that he said, I, I, I greeted my madam this much you know i'm is it by force do you understand that seven years you see them 90 percent of them become successful in one day is that also even more than graduates? It has nothing to do. Don't carry Christianity to cover foolishness. Motivational code does not cover it though. You know, they go and find online. Somebody did something. And I saw the person posted just went and find whether they used to create the codes themselves or the thing will appear when you need it. Now put it online. I looked at that laugh. Can we pray? And say, Lord. Put your hands upon my life. Take away lukewarmness from me. Because one of the things that kills this is lukewarmness. You are, your life is on Twitter, on TikTok, dancing to videos, downloading videos, and you have one thing you know how to do. Why? Listen, do you know there is a lady in Abuja, she's into fashion design or tailoring, to do internship, to learn. You pay almost 700. Imagine if that lady has 10 people in one month. How much is that? And you are telling me that ah, it's not in the world now. It's not in the world now. Take yourself from this general behavior. Become an expert. It's, it's better you even reduce. Take two years. Learn it. Learn it. See, there should be nothing you can't do about that thing. Become an expert. Pastor Jesus shared of a babbing guy. He met in one of the states. How he just got an opportunity because of his expertise power. Study this thing to understand that there is truly space, but only for experts. There are truly space, but only for what experts. Key yourself in that thing. That's what I do to my calling. No, key yourself in that thing. When I went to go, it looks like they've never seen a man of God like that in their life. Went to the mountain to pray, the prayer mountain. They wanted me to anoint, and I said, Just watch now. I will call upon this God, and He will hear me, Father. And you see, the power broke loose. I have not said a word. The videos are there.
confident enough. That's how we call him now. You will know that some people, they know they no be guesswork. All I said was, Father, pa. That's how the power of God broke loose there. Not that night that I will be begging him. Oh God, please show up now. Even if you don't show up again, this one don't disgrace me. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. I pray for your people, O oh God. May his hands be strong upon your life. May your ways be opened. May his favor and grace shine upon you. May God in heaven do you good. Every show of concern in your life, in your family, I decree the intervention of God now. In the name of Jesus, I decree the intervention of God now. In the name of Jesus, every exam you wrote this week, that you were in this service, I decree A's. Every exam you wrote from Monday through to Saturday, I release A's on them. In the name of Jesus, may God prove himself as God in your life. Give you a great testimony in the name of Jesus.